Praise be to God and greetings to you all on this last Sunday of this month. Um, for this morning's meditation, let's turn to Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. And they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged that him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus the way. The title for this morning is Overcoming Challenges Through Christ. Here was a simple message that you and I have heard over and over again about a man called Blind Bartimaeus. Jesus was coming into Jericho. This time there was only one blind man sitting by the highway side. And Jesus was followed by a great multitude. And as Jesus passed on beyond blind Bartimaeus, he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And the crowd said, hold your peace, which means be quiet. Be, be of good comfort. Be calm, be quiet. But he cried all the more, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus stood still. And of course, we know the rest of the story that Jesus called him, or the crowd said, come on, he ri rise, he calleth you. And he went to Jesus, and we know that he's, Jesus asked him, what should I do unto you? He threw his garment and kept and ran to Jesus, and Jesus said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Because when he replied, saying, I needed my sight, Jesus made him whole. Now, the focus of this morning's message is not about faith. But what did he do to overcome his challenge to get to Jesus? Remember that all of us in life... blind man was sitting all along beside the highway. But earlier, in another part of the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 20, it's talk about two blind men that sat on the highway side. So there were two people at the time, both of them did exactly the same thing what blind Bartimaeus did. And they got the healing. But here, blind Bartimaeus was all alone beside the sinks. Remember, this is what we need to understand. He was all alone. And the challenge he was facing was he was facing a crowd that said, keep quiet. He was physically blind, which means he was disabled. He was handicapped. And he was a crowd who asked him to keep quiet. He was the one who was blind. But in reality, this multitude was blind to his need. You got to understand this. There are times in your life when you go through challenges, you might be all alone. The people around you, your friends, your family members, your college colleagues or peers or everybody who's along with you may not understand your need when you cry out. They may be blind to your need. So it's a greater challenge to overcome it. And challenges are there everywhere. You've got to understand this. In the workplace, as many of us work, 
maybe an individual is a challenge for you maybe the job that you're doing every morning from evening morning to evening maybe a challenge maybe something that you don't like maybe deadlines to meet lot of pressure and you're under stress that's a challenge that you might face every day in life i'm not sure it depends on it varies from person to person or maybe you're a college student or a teenager young person think about college campuses think about school campuses when you step out you walk down the hallway or you'd walk outside the building on the sidewalk you see a, a crowd of people a sea of young people around you walking and the thoughts sometimes that come to you would be i cannot wear what they wear i cannot do what they do i cannot go where they go i cannot be cool like they are i cannot enjoy like they enjoy this seems to be a dull christian life a boring life i've said this many times to my parents but they just don't understand me well looks like they're weird they talk they talk something else saying that this is christian life well that's a challenge that you might be facing this morning a life around you that you see is not what you really expect and you want in this modern day life the year 2022 things are changing around the world it's a fast moving pace and we see things that are changing every day but what is this i go to church every sunday attend the bible study i make the eng group and the eng crowd they teach me a lot of things i get to see a lot of slides on sunday mornings i listen to the bible study well that's good but what is this i just cannot be like them i just cannot enjoy like them i just cannot be what i really want to be because of all this restrictions that i see around of a christian life that's a challenge for any person when you go to get your work you're literally so disappointed with somebody around you it's a challenge you want to shout at him but you just cannot shout you want to be angry with him you just cannot be angry you want to forgive him it's very hard here the young man blamed blind bartimus irrespective of what people talk, talked around him he pressed on he just wanted remember this remember this his focus was not the crowd he was focused was on jesus because he had a need which he knew that it was only jesus who could meet but could the crowd have told him hey listen jesus is passing by you're blind i've seen we have heard we have literally seen with our own eyes jesus heals the blind come on we'll take you along they didn't do it they didn't do it and that's what has happening in this world today too people around you may not understand your challenges but there's only one way only one truth and that's what it says our strength is from christ nobody may understand you in this world but if you are in christ the bible says that he is in you greater is he that is in you than he that is world that it's of course it means the powers of darkness but of course it means that everything else in this world is not great as the one is in you so your strength should be from christ alone please turn to the book of nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18 if you can just put that on the screen nehemiah the old testament prophet he saw the gates of jerusalem burnt the walls of jerusalem broken down he moaned he wept he fasted he prayed and he cried unto god what was his goal he wanted to see the wall of jerusalem built again but was there an opposition yes two people specifically named in the bible sanballat and tobiah despised them scorned them and let me read that verse then i told them the hand of my god which was good upon me and so also the king's words that he had spoken unto me 
and they said let us rise up and build so they strengthened their hands to this god to this good work in the night nehemiah left his place and went to watch this broken wall he didn't talk to the rulers to the jews or anybody in that place to those people he went alone observed it and then he went to his people and he told them this particular verse the hand of my god which is good upon me has strengthened me Amen. please turn to naima chapter 6 verse 9 and naima cries out unto god and this is what he says for they all made us afraid saying thy hands shall be weakened from the work that it may not be done now this is a cry to god now therefore o god strengthen my hands this is the reason why paul in his book to the philippians says in chapter 4 verse 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me remember this there are things that you and i cannot do but with god all things are possible so that is what he was meaning in this verse particular verse that strength comes from only god nehemiah on his own with the help of the rulers and the jews could not build but he said to his people arise and build that the good hand of god is upon me and then he cries out to god and he tells god god strengthen my hands and those people says our hands are strengthened and they build the wall and completed it now another common thing that let me relate to something practical that you and i face in this world some young of young people do apply for scholarships you apply for professional schools you apply to schools for maybe some degree program or the other and some of us do apply for jobs but there is one question that sometimes is asked either in the application or an in interview what are your strengths and weaknesses of course we do admit some of us i got good writing skills got good technical skills good research skills good speaking skills and so on those are your strengths but remember at any point of time if you or i think that my teaching skill my reading skill my technical skills are for by, by my own ability then you lost you lost it what does it mean that you are not telling that that strength is only from christ amen all things is only through christ david as you all know and as we have read from our childhood about king david he had numerous enemies at times he was surrounded by everybody all his enemies and there was no way out but in psalm 27 in second samuel chapter 22 verse 33 he admits and he confesses this, this that god is my strength and power when god delivered him from all his enemies and from the hands of Saul he says this god is my strong refuge and has made my way blameless that is a different version in king james it says my god is my strength amen elijah a powerful prophet he told his people now it's time for you to choose either you worship baal or worship the lord god i worship so bring down your prophets bales prophets 415 number remember you got to understand this and god realize this and you know the story that god is not a god who works with numbers he there was only one man here against 450 prophets of bale and god worked a miracle in that place proving that he was the lord god of elijah and as a not spending much time on this but he asked for an altar to be built he asked those prophets to cry out and they cried out from the morning to the evening and elijah mocked them saying looks like your god is sleeping he needs to be awakened maybe he's on a journey but remember our god does not sleep nor slumber he is the one who sent fire from above and burned the sacrifice which had bullocks cut into pieces water four barrels and more once twice thrice poured around it the trench around it was filled with water 
and still fire came down from above and proved he was the God of Elijah and the true living God. But that's not where I want to stop. The same man, the very next chapter says, when Ahab's wife Jezebel threatened and said, tomorrow at this time, I would take your life, which means I would kill you by this time. This man went down, sat under a juniper tree, and he said, Lord, I just want to die. There are times in your life and in my life when we say, I have no more strength to talk. No more strength to read the Bible. No more strength to pray. God, no more strength to meet this man that I place, that I see at work all the time. Oh God, no more strength to study. Those people that I've seen on this campus every day seem to be having a nice life. But God, young people, there are many college students who take, take 12 credit hours, 15 or 18, study full time and sometimes work 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week, sometimes 40 hours a week. So here's a challenge. God, I'm working to pay my bills. I do not want to get any support from my parents and they don't support me too. This is an average college student in the US that tells this. But God, what do I do? I have more C's on my transcript than B's and A's, but I follow you. That's a challenge. That's a challenge. But can you take up that challenge too, if you are one of them? That you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. Elijah, Elijah was not forgotten by his God. God sent an angel and said, get up, rise and eat. Here's water and a cake for you. He just ate that. The second time the angel came and said, arise and eat. And he ate both. And the word of God says, with the strength of this meat, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mount of God called Horeb. He's a God who can strengthen your physical need to. You can meet your need physical strength. There are times where you're physically weak, mentally down, and of course, emotionally too. But the God of Elijah can strengthen you, not only through a meat, but in any way possible. And that's what we need to do. Our strength is only from Christ. And Paul says it so, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now you've got to understand, what does that mean? He's writing from the prison. In the prison, I can still rejoice through Christ. Only through Christ. If it was a man who was not in Christ, he would grumble, he would murmur, he would say, when can I break open this jail? When can I get out? Who will help me? But here was a man, yet he was beaten. He was tortured, yet he rejoiced. He sang praises. He sang praises through Christ. He forgave his enemies through Christ. See, there are times when we cannot forgive somebody. But you can do it through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who said to me. When somebody is jealous of you, how, how can you treat him? What can you do? You can only forgive him through Christ. So Paul was saying that I cannot face King Agrippa on my own. I cannot face Festus, nor can I face the Pharisees and Sadducees who keep trapping me or trying to accuse me all the time. But I can do it all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. See, you ought to understand this verse too. That don't think that I can do all things through Christ and go and attempt something out of the will of God or plan of God. There are times that you might think I can do this, but it may not be in God's will or God's plan. So only through Christ can you do all things. Now finally, I know it's time for the worship team to come, but let me just go on to say it's William Carey, a man of God, after leaving his country called England, went to our own country called India. But remember, it was not the 20th century. It was the 1800s. Many of us read about him. But what I want to share with you this morning about this great man of God was that he, after 20 years of labor, 20 years of hard work, getting all his manuscripts, 
trying to write the New Testament in different Indian languages. Trying to get his printing press do the best. His building, his manuscripts, his Bibles, all were burnt out in a fire after 20 years. Could he have just said, no more strength, God, no more strength. I left my land to come to a land which is strange. He once wrote in his diary, I am a strange person in a strange land. There are times like William Carey, you might have felt in life. You might feel in life, but remember, what did he do? He knelt down and he, and he told God in his prayer, I thank God for the strength to continue. He went on to translate the New Testament in 42 languages of India. Many of us sitting here, trying to just write four or five Indian languages and read is a challenge. But this man, this man did not give up because he could do all things to Christ who strengthened him. I do not want to take much time, but let me just say this. Isaiah, in the book, in his own book, in chapter 40, verse 29, he says, to those who do not have might, he increases strength. Let not the rich glory in his riches. But remember, we cannot glory in our strengths. But you, if you do not have might, he is the one who increases strength. When you cannot do anything more. Like, again, students, I'm relating this to you more because I fully understand an English message is mostly for the young people. Of course, all of us can receive from God. But we do this for young people. There are times you may have worked on an assignment for four days. You live in a country that are bless, is blessed and you live in a time called the year 2022. After working for four days, suddenly your computer freezes. You lose all your assignment. You're not saved at no backup. You sometimes become so frustrated. And this happened to many of us. Something we have built, something we have worked on for many days, everything collapses, everything is gone, everything is vanishes in a fraction of a second. To start all over again, I have no strength. The deadline is tomorrow. I got to finish it tonight. Remember, you can only do things through Christ. Yeah. Only Christ. Yeah. That's why there are times. See, that's why I'm saying Christian walk looks to be boring for especially young people. A life on a campus, a life away from parents, a life that seems to be isolated, empty, boring. And sometimes you think, what is all this? Remember, Christ, I, I believe that Moses would have thought the same thing. Walking in the wilderness, seeing a burning bush, where am I? In the wilderness. Is this what I was called for? I should have been happy in that palace of Pharaoh. Enjoyed everything here. But here's my walking within the wilderness. But remember, the same God who talked to Moses speaks to you and me too. If he called you from the burning bush, he's called Moses from the burning bush. Well, in the place where you are, he still has got a plan for you. Amen. Remember that you can only overcome challenges to be used of God. Otherwise, why should you need a person like David, Moses, and Elijah to be in the Bible? So remember this. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Only they that they wait upon the Lord. So what do you do? So I said about different challenges. So what do you do? What do you do as a young person? Or what do you say, middle-aged man? Or what do you do when there is a problem or an issue or a challenge in the workplace or in the place of study or in your classroom? What do you do? The only thing that you have to do is like great men of God have done, go, go to your room. Open your Bible. Read this verse. I can do all things through Christ. Meditate on that word. Meditate on Isaiah 40 which says, to them that gives have no might, he giveth strength. Is this word true? Are we supposed to live by the word of God? Because the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you got to use this word and sit along with this word rather than go close to your room, close your door and get onto your bed and say, hey, I just don't want to talk to anybody. This is not life. This is not what Christian walk is. Or say, I'm going to take my car and drive around the mall and spend some time tomorrow. I should be better than today. No, that's not what God wants you to do. That's not a Christian life. Christian life calls you to wait upon God so that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens Him. 
you can only overcome challenges through Christ. God bless you. Amen. Praise to the Lord.